If you go into the kitchen to cook a dish and the very first thing you get is a recipe and you follow the recipe and you work with the recipe, eventually you'll master that dish. Once you've mastered it and made it a few, a few times, you can make the dish over and over again and you'll remember the recipe. You don't have to keep going back to the recipe book. Now, if somebody says, boy, that's really delicious, you don't say, well, it's a miracle, like uh, something out of voodoo. No, you just followed a proven recipe that had been worked out by people before you. And that's basically the secret of success. If you want to be successful in starting a business, then you study what people have learned and everything that people have learned they've written down or shared in seminars or put onto audio programs is I, I learned this from a very wise man named Kopp Kopmeyer, who spent more than 50 years studying success. And he had developed more than 1,000 success principles that he had derived out of something like 6,000 books. And when I met him, I asked him the question you would ask. Of all these thousand principles, because I had studied it all, which is the most important principle of all? And he said, Brian, he said, it's simple. He said, use proven success methods. He said, learn from the experts. He said, Brian, you'll never live long enough to learn it all for yourself. So what I find is that successful people are those who learn from others who've gone before them. Unsuccessful people try to make it all up, like a cook going into the kitchen, taking ingredients out of the cupboards, throwing them all in a bowl, and wondering why it doesn't taste good. This is why people's sales careers, why 80% of salespeople are functioning well below their potential, only 20% make all the money. Why 20% of businesses in any industry make all the profits. Why 20% of the professionals in any service uh, make 80% of the money and so on. It's because they follow proven success principles, proven recipes, proven formulas, proven combinations. And they just do them over and over again until they master them. Then they can do more and more of them, faster and faster, easier and easier at a higher level of quality. And all that translates into greater results. We are where we are and what we are because of the choices and decisions that we have made in the past. Uh, choices and decisions with regard to the jobs we take, the people we work with, the people we marry, live with, socialize, the investments we've made, uh, the uses of our time and so on. We are where we, and wh where we are and what we are because of our choices and decisions. So the starting point of changing our life is to make new choices and decisions, which requires that we stop making old choices and decisions that are not helping us. In other words, to get into something new, you've got to get out of something old. To start associating with positive people, you've got to stop associating with people who are not helping you. And you're, you, in, in many cases, people realize they're going to have to break off old friendships, break out of relationships. I've seen this happen countless of times, quit jobs, um, stop associating with negative uh, family members who are constantly critical is you're going to have to, to reorient yourself to more positive people. Now, the third principle that's so important is this, is that there's a law of attraction in the universe that says that you attract into your life people and circumstances in harmony with your own thinking. So if you start to read really good material, set goals, and commit to your own personal development, strive to become good at what you're doing, listen to positive audio programs, associate with positive people like at this seminar, what happens is you set up a force field of energy that is invisible, but it attracts into your life people, circumstances, possibilities, opportunities that would not have been there in the absence of your own changed thinking. So all three conspire. Stop making bad decisions, start making good decisions, start associating with people who are encourage you are in harmony with what you think and then trust to this law of attraction to bring the right people into your life. Dr. Shrelly Blotnick's study of self-made millionaires. 83 out of 1500 people became self-made millionaires over 20 years. He found that the one quality that they all had in common was that they picked work that they loved, they specialized in that work, they became very good in it and they eventually became paid very well for it and then they held on to the money. I throw that last one in because I know a lot of you can relate to that. They held on to the money. They didn't gamble or speculate. They were very conservative with their money. They got paid more and more and they held on to it. One of them started off cleaning toilets on the night shift for an airline. And today he's the president of the airline and makes $1,950,000 a year. Now he's been with the airline for 35 years, but it's not easy to be, not difficult to become a millionaire when you're making $1,950,000 a year. Even with taxes, you can still do pretty well. He found that the quality that separated these people from the ones who struggled for 20 years and weren't much further ahead than when they started was that they became totally absorbed in their work. 
totally committed to their work. They lost themselves in their work and when they lifted up their head about the age of 43, 44, their accountant told them, by the way, you're worth over a million dollars now. Did you know that? Most of them became wealthy without even knowing it. And so it's important that you find the work that you can commit yourself to. It's important that you find the relationship you can commit yourself to. And if you are an employer and you have people working for you who are not committed to their work, these people are like rotten apples in a barrel. I have found that people who are not committed to their jobs are people who will always cause trouble within an organization. And the people who are committed, they don't, you don't have to be the most talented and you don't have to be the best looking, you don't have to be the best educated, but if you're committed to your work, you'll do more than all the people with all of those blessings. So commitment is important. Helen Keller said this beautifully. She said, life is either a daring adventure or nothing at all.